Item number, SCP-154. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-154 is to be kept within Weapon Locker 8, in Armed Research Site 47. Personnel wishing to research or use item must submit the required request forms. Anyone attempting to remove the item without clearance, or from outside the facility, is to be terminated on site. Description SCP-154 is a pair of simple bronze bracelets, completely circular and large enough to comfortably hang off the arm of most people. Spectrograph analysis has proven that the item is composed entirely of copper, 85%, tin, 11%, arsenic, 3%, and traces of other slight impurities, less than 1%. When both bracelets are worn on the same arm, and the wearer concentrates on them with arms extended in a depiction of a traditional knocked bowstring pose, achieved by having the arm with the bracelets completely extended in front of oneself, with the opposing arm extended up to the elbow of the fully extended arm. A large, indistinct, incorporeal bow will form in the extended hand, and both bracelets will glow slightly. From that point onwards, SCP-154 can be treated as a bow, until the pose or concentration is broken, which results in the bracelets reverting to normal. There is no actual bowstring, but completing the motion of pulling it achieves the same effect. When the bowstring is pulled and released, the bones of the arm will be forcibly ejected from the extended limb, traveling in a straight path at speeds recorded over 300 meters per second. The missing bones and resulting damage to the arm are quickly regenerated, and the weapon is capable of being fired again within minutes. Tests using subjects possessing multiple arms and hands, such as SCP-1884-B, have demonstrated the ability to fire SCP-154 several times, with the bones of different arms being used with each successive firing. The regeneration implemented by the item is limited, only affecting the damage inflicted by the weapon itself. This regeneration seems to be an automatic action, and will continue in almost all situations. Both firing the weapon and the resulting regeneration are understandably painful and participants which have used the item once are generally disinclined to repeat usage. However, there have been found to be some occasional abnormalities regarding the regeneration. Most often this manifests simply as minor mutations of the original subject, such as changes in size, pigmentation, and structure of the original organelles. These are an uncommon occurrence, capable of happening during any use of the weapon though generally tend to occur during repeat usage. There are more drastic abnormalities, though these are much rarer, and coincide with highly frequent use. These mutations can range from anything such as the growth of extra joints and digits in the affected arm, to a complete change of the chemical or physical structure of the limb. One test subject unknowingly had the bone matter within his arm converted into an unstable explosive compound, only discovering the fact when it detonated causing two fatalities and three casualties. Another had the entire bone and musculature structure morphed into fully functional serpentine physiology. Item number, SCP-269, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-269 is stored in a standard Safe Class Secure Locker at Site-19. Experimentation with SCP-269 may only be performed on Class D personnel, and only with prior approval from at least two Level 3 senior researchers. Description SCP-269 is an unmarked bracelet composed of red jade, approximately 11 centimeters in diameter in its inactive state. SCP-269 exhibits unusual resilience, as all attempts at obtaining a sample have failed to date as well as constantly maintaining a temperature of approximately 36 degrees Celsius, regardless of ambient room temperature. When placed on the wrist or ankle of a living human subject, SCP-269 contracts to fit tightly but comfortably over the extremity. Over the next 24 hours, SCP-269 extends flexible tendrils that integrate with its host's circulatory system through the ulnar and radial arteries a process described by test subjects as being painless, but mildly uncomfortable. Upon completion of this process, 
SCP-269 cannot be removed from its host without amputating the affected hand or foot. Once SCP-269 is fully integrated, it will begin to filter substances from its host's bloodstream. How this is done is not fully understood, but the process occurs over three stages. In the first stage, SCP-269 will begin to filter contaminants and infectious agents, such as bloodborne bacteria and viruses. This includes many disease agents that are currently incurable, such as the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. SCP-269 appears to be capable of identifying and isolating infected blood cells from healthy ones. As this process often results in a general improvement in the health of the host, the host may resist attempts to have SCP-269 removed. This stage typically lasts anywhere from one week to one month. In the second stage, SCP-269 will begin filtering components of the host's immune system from the bloodstream. Because SCP-269 continues to filter infectious agents from the host's body, this generally goes unnoticed, unless a blood analysis is performed. Stage 2 lasts anywhere from one month to six months. In the final stage, SCP-269 will begin to filter vital blood components, such as red blood cells and platelets, causing an onset of acute anemia and thrombocytopenia. Hosts that reach stage 3 quickly weaken and will invariably expire within one week unless massive blood transfusions are given. SCP-269 came to the Foundation's attention following reports that a civilian, one Mr. had been cured of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, and died shortly thereafter. SCP-269 was discovered attached to Mr. Rand's wrist and was secured by Foundation agents after it was found that SCP-269 had integrated into his circulatory system. Investigation into the precise function and origin of SCP-269 is ongoing. Item Number SCP-288 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-288 is to be kept in a locker, with only security personnel of level 2 clearance or higher given the combination. They are currently contained in the small velvet-lined black box they were retrieved in. Personnel who have worn the rings during testing are to undergo full psychological exams afterward, and their experience is recorded. Description: SCP-288 consists of a woman's engagement ring, hereafter referred to as SCP-2881, and matching men's band, hereafter referred to as SCP-2882, both silver in appearance, the ring containing a small diamond. They are relatively plain, and bear no marks as to their origin or make, but staff routinely describe them as seeming like very nice wedding rings, if a little plain. They are completely normal in every sense, and have been damaged by endurance testing and subsequently repaired through typical jeweling practices, and their effects are only observable while worn. When SCP-2881 is worn by any adult female in a relationship, she immediately becomes what has been portrayed in popular media as an ideal housewife. Women describe this experience as if they are not in control of their body, merely observing their own actions. They lose all ability to form their own opinions and instead automatically agree with the opinions of their spouse, and display very few negative emotions, if any. They seem to gain an instinctive knowledge of cooking and baking, in the style considered to be the quote, traditional American style, including such dishes as apple pie or macaroni and cheese. These dishes are always professionally made regardless of prior skill. A similar knowledge is evidenced in the spheres of cleaning and light repair, Subjects regularly display the ability to sew and knit, even if they were not able to do so before donning SCP-2881. Along with this knowledge, they feel an innate urge to cook, clean, and mend things around their home incessantly. They lose the will to have a job of their own, and become exceedingly obedient and loyal to their spouse, as well as religious and authority figures. Many wearers of SCP-2881 exhibit a fondness for rather modest dress, and are uncomfortable when wearing pants or more revealing clothing. They also develop a fondness for children, and if they do not already have children, express the urge to have them. 
When SCP-2882 is worn by any adult male in a relationship, he undergoes a similar change, taking on the characteristics of popular media's portrayal of an all-American dad, whether or not he has children of his own. Men describe the experience similarly to women, in that they feel they are not in control of their actions. He shows loyalty and obedience to political, religious, and authority figures, and an innate duty to his current professional management structure. He will work exceedingly long hours without complaint, and maintains an upbeat and motivated demeanor at his work. No matter the nature of his former personality, he becomes friendly and easy to approach, good with kids, and fiercely loyal to his spouse. He is always willing to help around the house, and willing to please with a shoulder rub. Men with children become attentive, engaged fathers, and men without children express a strong desire to have them. When used collectively, SCP-288 seems to recreate a model of a Stepford marriage. While this seems ideal and relatively harmless, SCP-288 has been responsible for numerous crimes, including spousal abuse, murder, and suicide. Both women and men report feeling trapped while wearing SCP-288 and out of control of their own life. After extended periods of wearing SCP-288, they often have intense feelings of depression and personality displacement. On a more sinister note, somebody wearing either instance of SCP-288 will take virtually any manner of abuse from a spouse without a word or raising a hand to defend themselves. In transsexual or transgender individuals, the ring appears to react to their gender identity. Therefore, a transsexual or transgender individual assigned male at birth would react to the female ring, rather than the male ring, whether or not they were pre- or post-gender reassignment surgery. Homosexual subjects are affected by their actual gender. A male homosexual will not react to the female ring, just as a female homosexual will not react to the male ring. More testing upon sex and gender is pending. The potential for SCP-288 to create a domestic slave proves disturbing to some, and seems useful to others, and records show that it has been used in such a fashion before. Preliminary testing of SCP-288 has proved inconclusive. The rings themselves display no physical anomalies compared to a normal wedding ring of similar type. It is theorized that the rings profile their subjects mimetically, drawing on the experiences present in the subject to influence their behavior upon activation. This theory is supported by SCP-288's ability to differentiate subjects based on their self-perception of gender, rather than their physical sex. SCP-288 was discovered by Dr. Wrights and data expunged. Thankfully, her boyfriend grew wary of her extreme mood changes and called the emergency SCP contact number she had left for him delivering SCP-288 into the Foundation's hands. I'm just glad I got suckered into it before somebody else did, even if it was horrible. Dr. Writes. It should be noted that both instances of SCP-288 resist being separated, and wearers may feel compelled to buy or even steal the rings in order to keep them nearby. Addendum 288A it has been revealed through extensive backtracking of SCP-288's history that it has been associated with upwards of 25 instances of homicide, between 13 and 15 suicides, and two reported cases of spousal abuse. It has regularly resurfaced in pawn shops across the United States for at least 80 years, though all attempts to track it past the early 20th century have failed to reveal further evidence. Item Number SCP-331 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures When not being used, SCP-331 is to be kept within a typical electronic seven-digit metal safe in Dr. R's office. The code is to be changed on a monthly basis by said doctor. Personnel who wish to examine SCP-331 must ask for authorization beforehand. As of date undisclosed, SCP-331 is worn by SCP-331-1. Description SCP-331 is a red plastic cat collar, approximately 23 centimeters in length. Metal studs surround the collar in intervals of 1 centimeter. Testing has confirmed the metal to be nickel. The bell consists of stainless steel 
electroplated with 24 karat gold. Ringing the bell has no distinguishable effect, adverse or otherwise. The word tumbles has been painted on the back of the collar in yellow paint. Testing has confirmed that there is nothing unusual about the paint. SCP-331 exhibits no abnormal tendencies when worn by a living cat. When SCP-331 is fastened around the neck of a deceased cat, hereafter SCP-331-1, SCP-331-1 is resurrected with no initial adverse effects. The collar does not halt the decomposition process, however. Fur and skin still rot at a regular pace. Organs are unaffected by the decomposition process. Testing has yet to determine the exact cause for this. SCP-331-1 shows no signs of distress during the decomposition process. SCP-331-1 can be killed by conventional methods, whereupon it remains deceased. The separation of SCP-331 and SCP-331-1 data expunged, unless SCP-331-1 is deceased. It should be noted that SCP-331-1 always answers to tumbles and has an amiable personality, despite what it was called or how it behaved pre-mortem. SCP-331 was discovered when reports reached a Foundation agent of a zombie cat witnessed around park. Said agent immediately alerted the Foundation of a possible outbreak of SCP-8. MTF was dispatched and neutralized SCP-331-1, whereupon it was transported to site after no trace of SCP-8 was detected. Upon arrival, research was conducted on SCP-331 that confirmed its properties. Item Number SCP-399 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures When not being worn by a human being, SCP-399 is inert. SCP-399 is to be kept in a locked safe at facility when not in use. Testing of SCP-399 requires Level 4 approval and is only to be handled by personnel who have received a rating of clear or better on Psychological Profile 399-17. Any generators, power plants, or similar energy sources in the vicinity of testing are to be dedicated exclusively for testing and should not be used to power any other mission essential equipment or facilities. As a result of Experiments 399-4 and 399-5, testing of SCP-399 on human subjects requires Level 5 approval and is to be conducted in isolation from other SCPs or sensitive facilities. Under no circumstances is SCP-399 to be tested or stored in the vicinity of any free energy or perpetual motion device. Description SCP-399 is a ring consisting of two metallic bands, linked by six metal bars, with six pieces of a transparent purple glass between them. The ring is of unknown make and bears no identifying stamps. When not being worn by a human being, SCP-399 is inert. When placed on a human being's finger, the ring activates, which is indicated by the six glass segments beginning to glow one by one. In testing, this process takes from three minutes to six hours, dependent on the availability of nearby energy sources. Once fully active, the ring responds to spoken or mental commands from its wearer until removed at which point it becomes inert until worn and re-energized. In this mode, SCP-399 is capable of manipulating or reshaping objects within a 5 meter radius of the wearer, at varying levels of complexity. By a currently unknown mechanism, SCP-399 draws in energy from its nearby environment with which to perform these functions. Minor tasks, such as causing a small object to levitate or turn itself inside out, require minor amounts of ambient energy, which is primarily drawn from the surrounding atmosphere, causing a temperature drop. At finer scales, progressively more energy is necessary, and SCP-399 has been known to draw energy from electrical generators, nuclear reactors, and data expunged to complete the reaction. If there is not sufficient energy within SCP-399's range, approximately 300 meters, to perform the operation, SCP-399 will draw on its wearer 
and data expunged. More detailed operations also carry a greater chance of catastrophic failure, resulting in data expunged of the wearer. The extent of SCP-399's ability to alter objects within its range appears to be solely a function of energy available to it. With an adequate power source, manipulation of objects at the atomic or subatomic level appears to be possible. SCP-399 came to the Foundation's attention on data expunged, when a string of power outages and unusually cold weather were reported in the vicinity of data expunged. The object was located in the possession of a Mr. who had apparently become deceased during an attempt to use SCP-399 to change lead bars into gold. How he came into possession of the device has not been satisfactorily determined. SCP-399 does not appear to have any means of storing energy that has been drawn in, simply drawing in the quantity it requires to perform a task and expending it immediately. It has been speculated owing to the high energy demands of SCP-399, that it was intended for use in conjunction with a dedicated portable energy source of high volume. Such a device was not found among the effects of In conjunction with such a device or an SCP of a similar nature, SCP-399 could potentially be used to devastating effect, as a weapon of mass destruction, or to neutralize other Keter-class SCPs. Due to the potential negative consequences of a failure on this scale, this line of experimentation is not to be explored at this time. Experiment Log 399 Experiment 399-1 Date Expunged User Dr. Subject One phone book User attempts to open book to page 368. Experiment successful. Ambient temperature of test chamber drops by 4.8 kelvins. Experiment 399-2. Date. Expunged. User. Dr. Subject. One t-shirt, colored blue. User attempts to change shirt's color to red. Experiment successful. Power brownouts reported in nearby sections of facility. Ambient temperature of test chamber drops by 9.7 kelvins. Experiment 399-3. Date. Expunged. User. Dr. Subject. One phone book. User attempts to cause text of book to be translated from English to French. Experiment successful. On-site electrical generator overloads and fails causing loss of primary power to facility for six hours. Ambient temperature of test chamber drops by 17.4 kelvins. Experiment 399-4. Date. Expunged. User. Dr. Subject. One phone book. 3D class personnel. Special test protocols. Experiment 399-4 was conducted in remote facility all electrical sources in the area were deactivated except those necessary to power monitoring equipment. User attempts to cause text of book to be translated from English to French. Experiment successful. D-class personnel are data expunged. No significant reduction of ambient room temperature. Experiment 399-5. Date. Expunged. User. Dr. Subject. Remains of 1D-class personnel from Experiment 399-4. Special Protocol. Test conducted at remote facility. A dedicated nuclear reactor was provided as energy source. User attempts to restore D-class personnel to his physical condition prior to Experiment 399-4. Nuclear reactor reaches 57% capacity. Subject is successfully reconstructed physically intact but remains deceased. User attempts to restore subject to life. Data expunged. SCP-399 was recovered by hazmat personnel 48 hours later. Weather patterns and vicinity of facility site normalized within 96 hours. Radiological contamination of the region has been deemed within acceptable limits. Note. Following the loss of Dr. Dr. C requested and was granted permission to conduct the following test on himself. 
Experiment 399-6. Date. Expunged. User. Dr. C. Subject. Dr. C. User attempts to cause self to levitate. Successful. Upon initial levitation, room temperature begins to drop 1 Kelvin approximately every 0.68 seconds. Dr. C then begins to cause himself to hover slowly about the test chamber, which begins to produce electrical brownouts. The rate of temperature decrease increases to 1 Kelvin per 0.47 seconds at this time, and fluctuates as the rate of the doctor's movement is accelerated or slowed. Experiment is terminated after room temperature drops below 0 degrees centigrade. Item Number SCP-427 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-427 displays no means of self-locomotion or malicious intent at this time and requires only minimal containment. Due to SCP-427's adverse effects, only medical staff of Class 3 or above may handle or utilize it. All personnel using SCP-427 must record their total time using it in order to avoid unwanted mutations. Instances of SCP-427-1, colloquially referred to as Flesh Beasts, created by SCP-427, must be killed immediately, as it is impossible to communicate with or experiment on them safely. For this reason, instances of SCP-427-1 are classified as Keter. Description SCP-427 is a small spherical ornately carved locket made of a polished silver material. The ornate carvings do not seem to serve any function. It is unknown whether SCP-427's outer casing was crafted by sentience or not. Its circumference at its widest point is roughly 3 centimeters. SCP-427 was created after placing a pill of SCP-500 in the input booth of SCP-914 and using the fine setting. It displays no unusual activity when closed. When opened, a small glowing orb is visible at the center. The orb emits no radiation or energy, aside from the visible spectrum. When SCP-427 is opened and exposed to biological tissue, it rapidly regenerates cellular damage and somehow is able to purge invading compounds or infections. As a standard of measure, the common cold takes 3 to 10 days to be worked through the human immune system and eventually removed. In the presence of an opened SCP-427, this time is reduced to 2 to 4 minutes. Its healing abilities are directional so anything not in line of sight with the central orb experiences no effects. However, long-term exposure produces a significant health hazard. As the locket heals damage, it optimizes the body's natural systems. Resistance to disease and toxins is increased by 500% compared to accepted LD50 or death rate values after a total of 10 minutes of exposure and 1000% after 15. After 15 minutes of exposure, muscular systems begin optimizing, increasing strength and pain tolerance by 200 to 300 percent. All other systems continue to optimize. Class D personnel exposed to the device for over an hour total began mutating into a shapeless mass of tissue. The conversion time accelerates with continued exposure to SCP-427. The Flesh Beasts so named due to their appearance, created by SCP-427, are incredibly aggressive, attacking any and all personnel on site with lethal results. They are highly resistant to most known weaponry, but can be disabled with sufficient shock trauma or heat in excess of 1100 degrees Celsius, 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Intelligence cannot be accurately gauged but mapping of biological enhancement of the brain as a direct relationship with optimization of other systems suggests intelligence could exceed levels measured in humans when fully transformed. SCP-427 is currently being used as a partial replacement for SCP-500 pills, as it can cure almost anything SCP-500 is able to. All optimizations imparted by SCP-427 
are cumulative. Oversight has deemed the side effects an acceptable risk, but users must carefully record their total exposure time, as sufficient mutations are grounds for termination. Item Number SCP-436 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-436 must be closed at all times, except for testing purposes. It is stored in a large unlocked room to avoid misplacing the item. Personnel below level 3 are not allowed to enter the room. Once per week, SCP-436 will be moved to a nearby identical chamber to allow the floor to be reconstructed. Description SCP-436 is a small locket, apparently made from gold. When opened, an inlaid photograph can be seen. It is unknown if the photograph is the source of SCP-436's effect, because this cannot be tested. All measurements within a certain distance of SCP-436 will be affected by significant error. There is no observed pattern to the amount of error. It seems to constantly change, though this cannot be verified because it requires a time measurement. This issue is common to many aspects of SCP-436. The range cannot be reliably determined, the intensity of the error effect cannot be verified, and its location is often vague. It is known, however, that the error effect extends towards its own nature. To clarify, a measurement is required to learn anything about the error effect, and this measurement will have an error. The actual dimensions of an object will be permanently affected even after removal from SCP-436's range. Lids on containers cease to fit properly. Level objects tilt, and measurement devices in particular will warp. Individuals affected by SCP-436 will have their height and weight altered, and in some cases, their personality. Ability to learn, perform calculations, and make judgments will be impaired. Medical conditions, such as data expunged, and in particular cancer, have occurred. Long-term exposure to SCP-436 allows the alterations to accrue, eventually resulting in an often indescribable item. Dr. possesses three samples, currently under study. When SCP-436 is closed, the error effect apparently decreases in intensity, although, as previously mentioned, this cannot be confirmed. Attempting to average many measurements affected by SCP-436 will not result in a more accurate measurement. Note that these are not isolated instances of the effect. The measurements simply average to a significant deviation. With multiple averages from multiple sets of trials, the result still does not gain any accuracy. It is unknown how SCP-436 produces this multi-layer effect without Addendum when handling SCP-436, leave it in a flat, open place. We usually have trouble finding it again when personnel leave it in a container, and when we do, it's not easy to open. Dr. Item Number SCP-442 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-442 is to be kept away from its current owner in a secure container until being used for testing. The current owner must have a will leaving SCP-442 to a D-Class personnel. The owner is granted a suspension of termination. Should the D-Class listed in the current owner's will be terminated or otherwise invalidated for ownership of SCP-442, a new will is to be written at the next available opportunity. Description SCP-442 is a gold-plated pocket watch, three centimeters in diameter with hands showing the hour and minute. Along the edge of the watch, an inscription reads, To my good friend, a helping hand. While no apparent seams allowing SCP-442 to be opened without damaging it have been found, scans of the interior of SCP-442 have revealed nothing unusual in its workings. As long as SCP-442 is wound, it will set itself to the correct time. Crossing time zones or winding SCP-442 while it displays an incorrect time 
results in SCP-442 making rapid motions to adjust itself. The owner of SCP-442 is granted intrinsic knowledge of the time, and can recite the precise time to an arbitrary precision, as long as SCP-442 is on his or her person. Additionally, the owner of SCP-442 will never be late, as long as the watch remains wound and on their person. Attempts to force the owner to be late have never succeeded while SCP-442 is wound. When SCP-442 is left unwound or removed from the owner's person, the owner will be incapable of being on time. The severity of incidents causing this increase as SCP-442 is left unattended, invariably becoming fatal within a week. Ownership of SCP-442 passes through normal means, and can be sold or gifted to another party. SCP-442 has never been left unowned. Death of the previous owner results in SCP-442 instantly transferring to a new owner. A will, leaving SCP-442 to someone close to the previous owner upon their death, has never failed to surface. Attempts to prevent a will from coming into being have met with the same failures as attempts to make the owner of SCP-442 late. The new owner is instantly aware of the existence of SCP-442 and is drawn to it, although the effects of owning the watch only manifest after initial contact with SCP-442. SCP-442 was brought into Foundation control by J.S., a junior technician working at Site-19, when he inherited it as a family heirloom. S's superiors noticed an immediate change in work habits after he received SCP-442. S had a prior reputation for his lack of time management skills, and was regularly written up for being late to his station. When questioned by Dr. J, S showed SCP-442 to Dr. J, and said that it was a lucky charm. He then told Dr. J pieces of family lore attached to SCP-442, which later experimentation would reveal to be mostly true. Testing was performed to confirm SCP's status, after which its history of harmlessness was cited, and S was allowed to maintain possession of SCP-442, on the condition he willed it to the Foundation on his death. S was subject to observation and regular psychological evaluation during his possession of SCP-442 during which further effects of SCP-442 were discovered. Extended ownership of SCP-442 slowly rewrites the subject's personality. Within two years, regardless of previous attitude, the owner exhibits unusually high self-control and reacts to situations in a timely manner. S's motor control increased dramatically during this period, scoring in the 99th percentile of every test at the two-year mark. During this same time, the owner will become increasingly annoyed at tardiness. S broke ties with several friends over increasingly small infractions. After a decade of owning SCP-442, J.S. had completely changed. While S displayed a level of professionalism commendable of any member of the SCP staff, his private life had suffered tremendously. Unable to tolerate tardiness, S had pushed away all his friends and had been diagnosed with clinical depression. After S committed suicide, O5 reported ownership and had it transferred to him. A D-Class personnel was then chosen for experimentation and given SCP-442. Item Number SCP-533 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-533 is to be kept around the neck of a display dummy in room 12B at the storage facility. The dummy itself needs no special properties, but it must be kept in a glass case with glass breakage sensors on each face. The case itself must rest on a scale. A computer is to monitor the breakage sensors and the scale at all times. If at any time the glass breaks, or the weight of the case exceeds kilograms, then Procedure 533-001 must be executed immediately. Description SCP-533 is a necklace, usually approximately 54 centimeters in length and 3 centimeters in width. While the necklace has been under Foundation observation, 
The length has varied between 51 centimeters and centimeters. During the data expunged, the mass of the necklace varies between 804 grams and kilograms, but is typically close to 1.9 kilograms. All metallic portions of the necklace have a dull gold finish and appear to be made of cheap metal. Permission for further testing of the metal fitting's resistance to physical damage is pending approval. But existing test data shows that the fittings are more resilient than they appear. The clasp is of a standard barrel type. Attached to each side of the clasp is a round metal fitting. Most of the mass of the necklace is the body of a snake. The snake body is in constant motion, emitting from one of the round fittings, and sinking into the other at approximately 1.2 centimeters per second. The rate of emission does not seem to vary as much as the length and mass. The rate of absorption alters to accommodate changes in length. Since the Foundation acquired the necklace in 1980, an estimated 12,000 kilometers of snake body has appeared from one end of the necklace and disappeared into the other. The snake body can be easily damaged by conventional means, but any flesh or fluids removed from the body will be drawn towards the sink fitting and eventually reabsorbed. This physical attraction is similar to magnetism, except it does not increase in inverse proportion to distance from the fitting. Samples permanently lose their attraction if they are moved more than centimeters from the necklace and will not be reabsorbed, even if brought into direct contact with the sink. Coloration, markings, and texture of the snakeskin change over time. Herpetological analysis of the markings suggests that if the necklace were the body of a snake, the type of snake indicated would not remain the same. Various types of snake have been observed, but most often, SCP-533 appears to have the body of some type of constrictor. DNA testing of blood samples seems to support this hypothesis. Testing with D-Class personnel indicates no adverse effects from wearing the necklace, although all test subjects expressed strong desire to remove the necklace as soon as possible. One such test subject had prior experience handling reptiles, but even he was uncomfortable handling SCP-533. He reported that it, quote, felt wrong, unquote even though chemical analysis of skin samples shows no abnormalities. Addendum 533-1 SCP-533 is not to be removed from containment, except for testing. Specifically, SCP-533 is not to be worn to social events, Foundation-sponsored or otherwise. Dr. Addendum 533-2 Considering the number of years we've had 533, it may seem unlikely that Procedure 533-001 will ever be needed. However, I must remind the incident response personnel in charge of 12B that if that procedure is ever required, then failure to execute it promptly and exactly could fill the building with snake blood within hours. Unless you like drowning in reptile blood, I suggest you stop deferring Procedure 533-001 in your drill rotation. Dr. Addendum 533-3 SCP has, for reasons it has declined to share, stopped drinking all types of reptile blood. Two other SCPs are currently under consideration as stopgap replacements for SCP in Procedure 533-001. Until the new procedure is finalized, drills are suspended and I am to be paged if the measure mass of SCP-533 changes by more than percent. Dr. Addendum 533-4 Images of SCP-533 have been redacted and purged following Dr. R's discovery that the scale patterns of SCP-533 can be analyzed to reveal encoded messages. The redaction and purge was required because... One of the decoded messages was discovered to be an accurate record of the movements of Foundation personnel during the week of 204. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.